Hello, my name is Ellis. Welcome to the Greenwood Gaming Channel, your ultimate gaming channel here on YouTube. Today, I'm bringing you some Car Mechanic Simulator 2021. That's a mouthful. Probably call it CMS from now on. Hopefully, maybe. Or car. Car game. Whatever you want to call it. I don't care. Uh, what's today's video about? It's going to be interesting. I'm planning on taking bits of this stream and condensing it down into a shorter video, 10 to 20 minutes. So if you don't want to hang out this morning, that's fine. If you want to get some information on this game, just wait a day or two or possibly months and I might make that video. So there you have it. Other than that, anything I want to say, uh, I've only uploaded two videos this calendar year and it's March, almost April. So not great on my end. I've just had a bad year. Like, honestly, it's been bad since September, but uh, hopefully we're getting past it, and I can find it in myself to do what I enjoy. As you guys know, this is a hobby for me. I like talking to the camera. I don't know why. It just makes the games more fun for me. If you don't know what this game is, it's a, a simulator. It's a car. You're, you're a car mechanic. It's it, 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 You'll see. Uh, <laughs> The main point of this video is I want to show you how to start out. <clears throat> uh, but before I get into that, I just want to mention, I'm really glad I bought this game when I did, late 2022, instead of when it came out. A lot of the Steam reviews, you might be worried that it's buggy, things aren't working the way they're supposed to. I haven't had any issues, the game works great. I've had one crash and it wasn't the game's fault. I minimized it on startup and was doing 800 other things, so it crashed. My fault. Haven't had any weird bugs, anything weird happen, haven't lost any scrap or whatever you see on the internet. This game is polished, it's good, it's got all the DLC, it's awesome. Now starting out is the most intimidating part to people in this game because you have very limited money, you can't make supercars right away, you gotta build up your garage and unlock a lot of stuff, a lot of grinding. Uh, it's a carpal tunnel inducing game, so if you have bad wrists or hands, you know, want to make sure you're very comfortable. Take it easy, don't go too fast or anything. I get a little bit sore when I play this game for 8 to 12 hours straight, so... Drinking some tea this morning to give me some caffeine. I might put a dip in later, but it won't be during the parts I'm planning on editing. Just wanted to get that out there right now. This is a... A gross stream, I guess. I'm gross. Uh, so, to start, I figured I'd show you my main profile. There's three levels of difficulty in this game. There's normal, easy, and hard. I started this career on easy, and it's a pain to edit after you start your game. Like, if you want to change the difficulty, it's possible, but you're going to have to download a third-party software, and you're going to have to know hexadecimal code to actually edit the correct value. I might make a tutorial on that if you really want to know. It's, I mean, I could probably do it in about three minutes now that I know how to do it. Uh, but to someone who's like, wow, I got the hang of the game. For me, I don't know anything about cars. I'm not a car guy. I don't like cars. Uh, I was watching someone stream one of those house re renovating simulators or whatever. You know, the flip it or whatever stuff. I don't know. I thought it looked really relaxing. Got it. Tried it. It's like, okay, this is boring, refunded it, saw a recommended for this, clicked on it, checked it out, was like, wow, this looks really good. It's made in Unity, and for a Unity game, it looks incredible. It's, I don't know, semi-realistic, not an expert, <clears throat> but it's a T. Uh, I have learned about cars and the differences between them. I am playing with a couple of mods here. Uh, I did want to take a moment to talk about settings. settings as well. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm playing with a couple of mods. I mentioned in the comment or the description of the video, all I'm doing is adding additional cars that aren't part of the DLC or base game. Adding some custom paint jobs, or it's called uh, livery or livery. I don't know how to pronounce it. I think it's livery though, uh, which are just basically decal or paint designs and some configs, which let you get different body parts or engine setups on existing cars in the game. For example, um, 
an Aston Martin DBR5, you could maybe get a V12 in there or something crazy with a config mod. This game is super mod friendly. It comes with a car editor. So if you are playing your game and you're like, wow, I wish I could have bigger wheels or uh, higher suspension. I wish the car was off the ground. I want to jack it up. You can do that. I haven't tried it yet. Looking forward to it, though, when I have some more time or motivation. Quickly want to go over my settings for you guys. There's a couple of important ones. Nothing, nothing really matters in terms of controls and stuff. You might want to turn down your steering sensitivity. I think that's actually in this setting still. Yeah. So the game settings, the cog symbol. There's some important settings in here. I just want to go over real quick. Um, these are all personal preference. I'm going to turn auto zoom on part off because now that I've played the game a while, I don't really like that feature. <clears throat> what it does is if you click on a smaller part, the camera will focus on it. I'm pretty good with... Uh, actually, we'll just leave it on for, so you can see. Uh, the first setting you're going to want to change, this defaults to no. Unrealistic wheel sizes. You're going to want to put that on unless you're super hardcore. The reason I say this is you're going to get to a point where you're going to be upgrading these, these cars to a point where... Their horsepower and torque is just too much if you don't get a wider weird, wider wheel for more friction. Travel fees, this is up to you. I like to have it on. It's kind of not the most realistic if you have like 14 cars, you know. You're not going to be paying to travel, but I just rack it up as gas prices or whatever. Cars available everywhere. You're going to want this on unless you want more of a challenge finding cars. What this will do is there's certain zones, there's an auction where you would buy cars from other people who are selling their cars, a showroom, which is like a dealership, and a junkyard. This lets you get any of the of any of the cars in the game, including Mons, at any of the locations. A Ferrari in the junkyard is still about, you know, 1.2 million credits or monies or whatever. So they're still priced, but it just gives you more options. I find it more enjoyable because uh, if you're hunting for a specific card, it can be very, very difficult to find it. Uh, Imperial, because I'm American. Sensitivity, the steering sensitivity on keyboard or mouse can be very difficult to drive around curvy bits. Straight lines, no problem. Curvy bits, tough. <clears throat> I'm terrible at driving in this game. It's kind of hilarious. Gearbox, I typically just leave on automatic. I don't do many of the race tracks or anything other than the drag track. And on the drag track, it's manual by default. I don't think you can do automatic on the drag track. <coughs> Fade when using doors, when you transition, it fades versus not fading. I don't know. I haven't tried changing anything like that. I haven't tried changing that setting before, so I'm not exactly sure, but we're just going to leave it on. Events, don't know what events are. Couldn't tell you, I'm sorry. Uh, and show friends. I'm going to turn this off to respect my friends' privacies. But if you leave it on, when you go to an auction, <laughs> your Steam friends will bid against you. It'll just use their usernames. But I don't want to expose who I'm hanging out with, so. That's our settings. <clears throat> so how to start... Definitely want to check out the tutorials before you jump into the game. You could probably skip parking, junkyard, barns, and auctions. Everything else you're going to want to check. Check out, especially the pie menu. Yes, that's definitely the most important one. Everything else you can kind of get the hang of, but definitely worth playing through a couple of those just to get the, the gist for the game before you start messing up people's cars. I'm just going to finish my tea here real quick and then I'll be fully dedicated. <clears throat> so I wanted to show you my normal profile. As you can see, it has 72 hours. It's probably more like 65. Sometimes I'll forget that I leave the game up while I go watch basketball or something. So that's, that's all well and good. I'm going to blow my nose.
All right, sorry about that. I'm back. So yeah, updated OBS. It looks great now. It's super YouTube friendly. Uh, hopefully my audio's coming in okay. I'm gonna turn it down just slightly. I'm talking pretty loud, I guess. Don't want to wake up the family, but I don't want you guys' ears to be bleeding. <clears throat> I am using my camcorder mic, uh, so it's probably not the best. Uh, so what did I want to show you this 70 level or 70 hour save for? I'm level 32. I've got all the unlocks done. I can pretty much make money whenever I want. It's, I mean, I can. It's not a big deal. Uh, I just wanted to show you what you're working towards. And I wanted to show you before I tell you this is what you should get first. I wanted to show you what it was in case you want to take your, your mechanic journey in a different direction. Uh, so this is our garage somewhere on Route 66 or something just out in the desert. You can't like really leave when you're stuck here. There's not much to do on the outside besides, you know, this little memorial over here. Kind of cool that the developers put that in there. A little phone booth you can use. Anyways, really straightforward game. Most of the interaction that takes place with the cars. We got a little Carrera I just tuned up. It's pretty, pretty, pretty chonky. So <laughs> this is be your garage. Yours isn't gonna look like mine when you start. I'll take you into the garage first. If you're just starting out, the first thing you're gonna notice is all of this area over here is nice and clean and not cluttered. Is it the best upgrade? Probably not. We'll get into that in more in a second. Over here is uh, this is the most important room in your garage for sure. This everything in here is super important. This thing's really important. The welder window tent not as important. Uh, so let me take a look at the, the these toolboxes that are scattered all the way around your your workspace, and you can use any one of them to do these upgrades, it doesn't matter. As you can see, I have everything. And it shows you all your stat boosts. <coughs> we'll talk more about your mechanic upgrades in a second. I really just wanted to get into the garage and tools part of this to get you a, a frame of reference. All I want to cover in this part is the garage expansions, so. <coughs> Sorry, got a piece of mucus. Gotta take my inhaler. So I'm trying to try to, it's hard to s s switch between streamer mode and recording video to edit later mode. So I guess I'm going to try like a little, little cheesy, like YouTube-y, like, woo, excited to be here. Blow my nose again. All right, we're Gucci. Make sure there's no mucus on my nose. I guess I'll just start in the toolbox. All right, guys. So one of the first things you're going to be focusing on when you start a new career is expanding your garage to get all the features and basically just make more money off being able to do more things. I just wanted to show you some of the expansions. So if there's something you're not sure if you want to get before something else, at least you can see it, see what it does. It might help you on your way. Uh, in terms of most straightforward, you're going to want to get salvaging. Salvaging is by far the most important here. Get salvaging first, almost almost every time. Uh, actually, garage expansion. I take that back. I forgot what garage expansion did. <laughs> All right, let's let's try this again. 
See, so yeah, uh, be a YouTuber with me. See how many takes it takes to make an actual 10 minute video versus a four hour stream of slop. I wanted to make sure my parents weren't walking in when I was talking about that. All right, guys, so this, nope, don't like that. Don't like that. Why do I say all right, guys? I don't know. All right, fellow frog buddies. This is the garage expansion, garage and tools upgrade screen in your toolbox. We'll talk more about how to use this most efficiently later. I'm not going to mention any of the tools right now. I did just want to talk about the garage expansions. I want to show you what all of those are. So we have a paint shop that has three levels. We have a car wash, a dyno, which is where you tune your engine and gearbox, a salvaging station, which is where you get scrap which is a very important resource if you want to really upgrade your cars to like crazy levels. Warehouse, test path, which is like suspension and brake testing. Pretty useful, but not necessarily necessary. A lifter, which is just a car lift, you get a second one. Uh, and garage expansion, which is by far the thing you should be trying to get first in terms of of your your garage expansions i mean it, garage expansions garage expansion it just makes sense ten thousand is the most expensive i believe besides the paint shop and dyno and stuff but you don't really need any of those customizable things until you can work on the cars all the way <clears throat> so i wanted to show you some of the facilities the garage expansion we'll start there this is the garage expansion it gives you an area to repair brakes body parts uh, engine parts, suspension parts. This is the warehouse, which is not part of the garage expansion. You have to unlock it separately, I believe. You can store all your parts. Uh, it's basically unlimited storage. I, I've never even gotten close to filling it up. And you usually don't have a lot of spare parts laying around. I mean, I guess I could show you real quick. Uh, this is my warehouse. I've got just a whole bunch of parts I use and some that I might be able to sneak into a project every now and then. I probably need to go in there and just sell some of them. So that's the garage expansion area. Let's check our toolbox here real quick. That's done, warehouse is done. So next up, I guess we'll go to the test track or the test path or whatever. I don't like to go in the big garage doors. This is our test path. I guess I could throw a whip in here real quick. A nice little tip for this game, if you don't want to run around your garage everywhere to get to your different places, if you move a car, you go with it. So you can skip the running. This is the test path. It lets you test the brakes and suspension on your car by getting in and driving over these. It just prompts you with two buttons. You can align your wheels, align your headlights. This, however, Besides the alignment features is the exact same as taking your car to the test track and manually driving it around the course. If you don't know, you can go there, drive a little, I don't know, quarter mile loop, and it'll tell you the same exact stats on the part, the same parts. Uh, right next door is the paint shop. Once you get that very expensive upgrade, sorry, I'm losing some frames there for a second, uh, but very fun when you get, get to the point where you have enough money to kind of be doing whatever you want anyways. I don't think there's anything back here that's important. No. So I can't remember exactly what the different levels of paint shop do, but you are able to paint individual parts or you can paint a whole car. I'll show you kind of what that menu looks like just real quickly. Painting is, in my opinion, slightly underwhelming in this game. There's not a lot of customization options. You can get creative with the parts, but for example, uh, well, the Aston Martin here looks pretty good, but say I wanted this part painted, I couldn't have this part be a different part than anything else that says body. Well, this is a bad example because it's got a lot of parts, but you'll see later down the road what I'm talking about better. Anyways, if you paint the full car, you have all these settings. <clears throat> it might be confusing at first, but Basically, what your car looks like when you get done going through all these is what it's going to look like. 
I normally come over to the, the last section first to check out if there's any livery. So this accents the mirrors. This adds like a stripe, a mirror and a circle. Uh, not gonna paint this car right now. There's different types of paints you can do and all of this is tweakable. So I'll normally get something I kind of like, say something like this. And I'll kind of play around with the sliders on this tab to either make it shinier or more metallic or whatever. Take some of the clear coat off, blah, blah, blah. And it's going to say custom once you change anything. But if you do chameleon and change some of it, it'll still be chameleon. So if we go to our chameleon section, even though I changed the roughness, I'm still keep getting that chameleon effect. Uh, so paint shop's pretty fun. Like I said, you can paint individual parts also. Next up, and I would just teleport over there, but I want you to know where it's at. All of this is in the back of your shop. We've got the car wash. Super straightforward. Just move it over there. All it lets you do is <clears throat> excuse me, clean the interior and exterior of your car. I give everybody a free car wash because, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of cheesy when it comes to this game. I like to charge their battery and give them some, like, you know, bonus services to incentivize them to come to my shop instead of someone else's. I don't know. I'm just weird. Uh, lastly, and again, that's just right next to the paint shop, we've got the Dino Center. So we'll just hop this boy in there. This is my least favorite station just because it's kind of tedious. Uh, first of all, you need to have custom components to do any tuning on the laptop over here. So you need a custom gearbox, a custom ECU, and your car needs to have carburetors to use carburetors. I don't know if they have to be uh, the, the tune-up parts or if they can be regular carburetors. I'm not sure about that, so sorry about that. Also, you can use the dyno here to get your, your horsepower, your your torque and foot pounds and see how much you've improved the car. You'll also get your drag rating. Fun fact, you have to do a dyno every time you change it before you go to the drag track unless you want to pay like 150, which isn't much, to get it dynoed there. That about wraps up our tour. I think we got pretty much everything covered. This is the garage look customization upgrade that you saw. So your garage isn't going to look like mine when you start. This is just a theme I kind of liked and picked out. I like stone, stonework. Uh, I think we got, oh, salvaging. Salvaging is the last thing we have to go over. That's the second lifter. Salvaging is pretty important. I'd probably get this after you got garage customization. If you look in the top right of my uh, interface here, you can see it says XP level. And you see a little blue symbol. That's my scrap. So I've got five and a half thousand scrap. Uh, do I have any parts on me? No. Okay. Well, if you have a part that's not at 100%, you can bring it to the salvage container and you can scrap it to get a certain amount of scrap. It's it's This game is very grindy, uh, but I've got some tricks that I'm going to show you that will help speed this part up. You can also upgrade parts with scrap, which is what makes it so valuable. Uh, this is how you can get cars that are going almost 400, 500 miles per hour, I think. I haven't I haven't tried to go full send yet, but okay. I don't think there's much else I wanted to show. I mean, maybe I should go over some of this stuff. I guess it's not going to matter too much because I'd rather kind of get it together. I just wanted to show you the garage stuff. Everything else here you're going to just kind of need uh, pretty much just go in order of cheapest to most expensive, but the welder is really good. Okay, so I think that was pretty good. It only took <clears throat> 25 minutes. I'm back to streamer mode, by the way, so we chill in now. And hopefully I can get some decent tutorial out of that into a shorter video. Probably going to be like two minutes. Okay, I'd show you a little bit more around here, but I don't want to spoil anything too much. I do want to put my car back where it was. I'm 
weird about where I have my stuff. Oh god, we're starting a new mode, a new, a new save. <sighs> okay, time at here at 25 minutes into the video, we're actually starting. So I'll make a new game, call it a normal, and oh, it's not hard mode, it's expert. There's also sandbox. If you want to just mess around with the game, go ahead and try it, but easy. Easy is almost too easy. Uh, definitely a lot, lot better than normal. If you don't know anything about cars, start on easy for three to five hours or until you're comfortable. I will explain some of the differences real quick. Right here where it says all parts and orders and missions are discovered. That's the biggest part about easy that takes away from the mechanic gameplay aspect. You're getting these cars and you know exactly what's wrong and what you need to take out and replace or fix. It's super easy. Normal, you've got to diagnose the car. Uh, this, I'm trying expert. I haven't tried it yet. It says it removes the outlines and stuff. Uh, yeah, let's try it. So normally when you highlight a part or are trying to say you're trying to get to the steering rack. You can't just take off the steering rack, right? You gotta take off everything that's connected to it. And you can't just do the tie rod, the inner tie rod, because that's connected to the outer tie rod, which is connected to the knuckle, which is connected to the to the hub, which is connected to the whatever drive shaft it's using. So in normal mode or easy mode, good starting difficulties, you'd probably be okay on normal if you follow these tips and tricks. Uh, it, it'll tell you what parts you need to, to access in order to get the most effective, or not the most effective, but just the, the logical build path there. Oh god, we just started. Alright, there's no time constraints in this game, so we can chill, take our time, easy breezy. Oh god. So this is what your game's gonna look like. Uh, as you can see, we don't have our dyno facility, we don't have a car wash, we don't have a paint, we don't have a salvage, we don't have a test track, we don't have the garage expansion, all my tools are gone, uh, we got a school bus, I can't tell you how many times I was, when I started I was like, man, I can't wait to just repair that school bus and get it out of here. Uh, unfortunately, you don't get to mess around with it. That would be a great mod, though. Somebody added a school bus. That'd be funny. As you can see, we only have the one car lift. That's not a problem. I believe you're, you start with three places you can park your car, cars out here. So you can have up to four cars when you start just here. Um, oh, wow. It doesn't even highlight. It doesn't highlight anything. That's pretty cool. Okay, so normally on normal mode, everything you're seeing me click on would highlight, like this computer would highlight, this this oil thingy would highlight, oil drain. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look. We probably shouldn't buy anything, like straight out of the gates. Um, a tablet might be worth buying on board might be worth well actually okay I should probably do a little YouTube moment here so let me just kind of plan it on my head okay we're going outside uh, it looks a lot different blah 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 first thing you're going to want to do is head to a toolbox and use our one upgrade point briefly talk about those we're gonna be getting and where's the uh, uh, that's honestly tough to say probably start there though it's not like we need that until later okay I gotta sneeze <coughs> Oh 
Oh, I did that on camera. I'm sorry. Got a little snot rag. My bad, guys. That's gross. Uh, YouTube mode here. Or video mode, I guess. It's all on YouTube. All right, froggies. So you just got your garage on your chosen difficulty mode. You're going to notice real quick. All of our stuff is gone. I don't have anything. I've got no scrap. A level one, zero experience, 4,000 credits. So starting them out. Our garage looks like crap. We just bought it, I guess. The first thing you're going to do is head to a toolbox. I mentioned we talk about upgrades later. This is the time. There's a couple different types of upgrades. The first column is just movement speed. The second one is your ability to fix parts versus just having to buy new ones. So it's a very good column, especially Renovator. Renovator is super important. This is screw speed. This is mounting speed. This is order interaction and shop interaction. So as you can see here, 5% discount on parts you buy, uh, inspect the value of a car, 25% chances to get a case after finishing an order, which is actually a pretty good upgrade, but it's so high up the tree that you can't really abuse it. And the last column is the examination time. Over here, we've got our garage expansions, which we talked about. The first one we're gonna be going for is the garage expansion, no doubt about it. And we have some tools. We'll talk about the tools, uh, most of them. The tablet lets you shop from anywhere instead of going to the computer to buy parts. This is where you buy your parts. Uh, OBD, fuel pressure, multimeter, compression, tire tread. These are all extra ways you can examine cars for more XP. As you can see, these require the garage expansion, which is why we get it first. Battery charger, welder, very good welder, window tent toolkit. This is a cut because I got to blow my nose. So you're going to be wondering, how do I spend my first point? Sure, movement speed seems great. It's the last thing you'll ever upgrade. Please, just do everything else first. Renovator. We can fix parts, but we don't have anywhere we can fix them, so it's not useful. Screwing. Get done with jobs quicker. Get more XP faster. Not bad, not great. Regular customer, it's either regular customer or eagle eye. That's up to you. I'm going to go with eagle eye. 0 0.05 seconds isn't a ton, but it's going to unlock the next uh, tier. Oh, I have zero. <laughs> I thought I had a skill point. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> so once we get a skill point, that's what we'll be doing. Jeez, what's up with my nose? So every time I get in a good mood to do something, my nose has got to be like, nah. Let me just tweak this audio a little bit. I think I tweaked it too much. Okay, cool. Okay, so I look like an idiot now, but that's fine. Can I take orders from right here? Okay. All right, let's try this again. I should have been writing down timestamps so I could know when to edit quicker. <clears throat> No big deal. All right, Froggy, so you just got your garage. Level one, zero XP, zero scrap, 4,000 credits. What do you do? Uh, have a look around. Enjoy your new enterprise. I'll just walk in here. We got a big old school bus to deal with. If you don't know what to do at first, come over to the phone. This is where you're going to get orders. Uh, Right here, you can see what type of order it is. This is a story order. This is a normal order. The story orders are progressive. They get more difficult, more complicated as you do more of them. <clears throat> There's always these 
bonus orders or whatever. And sometimes you can get extra credits or extra XP, which can be super helpful for a really quick influx of bonus stuff. But repairing is honestly not where you make big money. It's probably the most fun because you don't know if you have to take the whole car apart <clears throat> versus a restoration where you're going to be taking everything off anyway, so you don't really need to know what's wrong with the car at first. Uh, so we'll go ahead and take this Luxor Barone. I should probably pull up a window where I can tell you what the actual cars are called. Would that be cool? Maybe I should. I'm not smart enough in cars to actually be able to tell you. Sorry. Opera GX, super loud. Okay, so 77 Luxor Barone. <clears throat> it's a Cadillac uh, Sedan DeVille Cadillac DeVille that's what we're working on and in case you were curious if you don't have find anywhere the all find any location or whatever setting we talked about you can only get this in the barn or a junkyard so we'll go ahead and take the order <clears throat> you can also get to your orders by opening up your radial wheel and just going straight to orders. As you can see, our store order is no longer there. If we wanted to, we could take this take this order as well, but I'm not going to. All right, so we got our first order. What are we supposed to do? Well, the first thing I like to do is take a look at the car status. And I actually like the little story elements they put in. I was just passing by and I noticed your repair shop. It's good that somebody took care of that old ruined petrol station. The car that I'm coming with today is quite a recent purchase. It was used on a daily basis. The condition is rather okay. It would be good to check the oil level and tires. That should be no problem for you. If you manage, then perhaps this won't be our last meeting. See you. <clears throat> uh, developed in Poland, sometimes the English is a little incorrect but it's just it's fine you always get what they're saying and it's kind of funny to see some of the phrases they use uh, so this will tell us our issues to fix and it looks like it has told me every single part I need to fix here which is great now if you're in normal or easy mode you would see a little blue star I think it's right here if you click a part and that blue star lights up it will highlight it on your car now, since I'm in hard mode, I don't have that luxury. And as you can see, I only have two brake pads. Fortunately, I've got to change all four tires anyways, so I'll be able to check the brake pads. I'm looking for 46. Uh, repair parts with a minimum condition 46. Uh-oh, i got to sneeze. Everything making sense? Yeah, good. Um, let me bring this stuff back up. Okay, cool. We also have to change the oil and some fluids. Okay, no problem. <coughs> All right, so this job seems pretty straightforward. It tells us what parts we need. I just have to find which two brake pads, I know where the fuel pump's going to be, I know where the oil filter, and there might be a couple of carbs that we have to check, but it shouldn't be a problem. However, before we even get started, I guess we can move it inside at least. We're going to examine the car. For every part you examine, you get one XP point. For every part you take off, you get one XP point. For every part you put on, you get one XP point. Uh, so it takes a while. We have to get 150. And there are a couple of ways you could cheat this. For instance, I could take an order and I could examine everything on the car and then I could just not do the order and there's no cash penalty or anything like that, I don't think. So if you wanted to, you could farm XP from right now and have level 31, you know, or level 32 without doing a single order, but 
that would suck. So we'll open up the hood here. I don't have any additional tests, so I guess we can go straight to examination mode. This is where you can uh, highlight selected segments of the car. If you're on normal or easy mode, these sections will highlight so you kind of know what you're talking or what you're looking for. Oh my god, it doesn't even tell me their status. I'm getting plus two because I'm on expert. You get bonus experience. Alright, so that's all the engine parts I can observe. This would be a suspension part. Front left suspension. God, this is so slow compared to what I'm used to. Well, we might level up just from this. There's a little suspension part down here that usually has two. You can get your fuel containers or liquid containers. I think you can get the fuse box here. Can't do the brake servo or the battery. There's another suspension piece. <clears throat> so until you are leveled out and have everything you want or close to it, you should be pretty much examining everything because it's XP to get you more levels to do things quicker. Uh, there's a front exhaust section to a middle exhaust section, another middle exhaust section, and that looks like it included the rear. Can't do anything with the fuel. If it's rear wheel drive, you can take this spring leaf for thingy. <laughs> I don't know cars, guys. I don't know cars. <laughs> And there should be just three or so over here. Yeah. Uh, you can get the crankshaft. All right, so this car should be fully examined. Uh, to get rid of this, you can either go back to normal mode or just turn around and walk away. <clears throat> It'll reset for you. Uh, so I think there's a place you can see I thought there was. Oh well. The next thing we're gonna do, <coughs> excuse me, I'm getting choked up, is drain our fluids. If you spill fluids, you have to pay to replace them or to clean up your garage, which isn't expensive at all, but you don't wanna be doing it. It's just gross, bad for the environment. So we'll get our drain tool from our additional tools in the radial menu. Drain the brake fluid. That would be the power steering. This would be our radiator. Sometimes the radiator has a designated coolant section or a coolant reservoir. It has a little cap on the radiator, the fluid's in the radiator. And there's our windshield washing fluid. Our last fluid is going to be oil, so we're in normal part mode. I'm going to take out our dipstick just to check it. That does not look like oil. That looks like water. So we'll jack the car up. Grab our oil filter. Put it underneath the car. Use it. Let's see that nasty stuff come out. So now all our fluids are out. Uh, I don't think there's anything I'm gonna have to change from underneath, so we'll bring it back down. My guy's gonna have to bend over a little bit to get these tires, but that's fine. I guess we'll start with the fuel pump, oil filter, and carb. So the fuel pump's gonna be on the fuel tank, and I'm navigating. Interesting thing to note, uh, let's pick an easy spot here. Back left tire, or back driver's side tire. You go into the examination mode, or the uh, the work mode, or whatever it's called. I don't know what the mode is called. Uh, but you can click on parts to kind of jump to them. And like normally, I couldn't, I couldn't just work on this tire. I have to get a little bit closer. So I'd have to come over here. Now I can work on it. See the, the okay, yeah. Interesting to note though, remember we started right here. If I go work over here on this tire, okay, I'm done. It brings you back to where you enter. So if you want to speed up your efficiency, you pretty much always want to be hitting the car from either here or here when you first go in because you're close to all your tools, you're close to your expansion. 
Uh, and there's nothing over here you need to grab. Except for the engine crane later, but that's fine. Uh, so fuel pump, we'll just jump in here, it doesn't really matter. I, I did say fuel filter, right? Not oil filter. Is that going to be an underneath? Yeah, that's an underneath, so I was wrong when I said that. Uh, I'm trying not to take shortcuts like <clears throat> I normally do, <clears throat> or just speed things up too much. Uh, so this would be our oil filter right here. Pop that guy off. Uh, if you don't know... Hmm. I mean, maybe I should have done normal mode to explain. Typically, if I came in here to our engine, that same spot where we took off... Okay, it does show the ghost. You'll see a lot of this stuff. <clears throat> for parts you need to add and stuff. If you press X on it, while you're in that mode, it adds it to your shopping list. So, say I wanted another tire, I could click on the tire, press X, check my shopping list with tab, and now you can see it's added it to my list. You can also do it from your inventory by right-clicking. So I added another one, so now it says we have two air filters. That's great. You can't really repair oil filters, so we'll have to buy a new one. Uh, I won't be able to do the carbs. So we'll do everything except the carburetor now, I guess. <clears throat> We're going to need two brake pads and four tires. Just make sure all the tires are the same. They're all the same. We'll go ahead and add one of those to our list. I need four of them, though. Just got to remember that. Fuel pump you can get out of there. Go ahead and add it. The part can be in to add it, like I said, or it can be missing as long as you have the ghost icon. So we have fuel pump. Standard tire, oil filter, and we're going to need two brake pumps, or two, <laughs> two brake pads. And that should be it there. Then we'll just have to do the air filter. So we come over to our computer. Once you have the tablet, <coughs> you can just do it from the tablet. Car parts. <coughs> this is where you'll find everything from engine parts to suspension. Anything that's not anything of these. Okay. Bodywork is your doors, your hoods, your stuff. Tires is tires. Interior is seats, back seats, and steering wheels. That's it. Plates is license plates. Gearboxes are custom gearboxes, which means you can tune them at the dyno. So if you don't have a dyno, don't get a custom gearbox. Tune-up is engine upgrades. Don't worry about that yet. Once we have some more money, you know, 50,000 credits, you can start messing around. And you will make more money, but... This is just upgraded engine parts, high performance, you know, racing stuff. Body tuning is uh, accentuated body kits, you know, uh, al alternative options. They're usually a little bit flashier. Like if I go in here, like this hood would be fancier. These lights would be a little bit different design. They're typically worth more. Rims, electronics. This will be all your fuses, spark plugs, pumps, all that sort of stuff. Air compressors, anything electrical. There are electric cars. Add-ons is kind of a joke. <coughs> I've never really messed around with these. Not a lot of cars can use them, but if they can, you would go to interior and additional parts, additional parts, and you can see I could stick something on the hood, the roof, or the back. Uh, most modded cars or DLC cars are not going to be able to do this, but a lot of the base game ones you might be able to. So I could, you know, I could put this air scoop on the hood, I could put a pizza thing on top, and I could put a spoiler on the back. There's not a lot of options. The police lights are the only, only thing that's really worth it. Maybe the spoilers. I don't know. I've used spoilers, but, like, twice. Uh, but we need car parts. So we'll go ahead and pick up our oil filter. And this is where that shopping list comes in super handy. It just lets you go straight to what you need. Uh, if you've got a good memory, though, it's not that bad. Let me just not be able to type for a while here. Go ahead and pick up these two brake pads. <clears throat> now, I mentioned that tires would be in the tire section. So, if you search for tires in the parts shop, you're not going to get any results. You go back. Uh, if you search from here, nothing happens. You have to be in the right sub store. 
to get what you want. Now tires are going to be confusing in terms of measurements at first, at least it was for me. These are all different types of tires that can be all different types of sizes. All of them can be the same sizes, I believe, you know, like they each have the same range of size they can be. Uh, just briefly over the difference, off-road tires, don't know why you would ever use those in this game. There's not much dirt driving you can do. It'd be great to have a rally series or uh, all-terrain vehicles. There are some trucks and stuff you can get, but unless you're going for a specific look, you probably won't ever buy these. Race tires I'll use on cars I'm not going to drag with, but are like high-end sports cars, you know, like a little Aston Martin or something. Slick tires are going to be your best friend if you're getting into dragging and high-performance vehicles. They give you the most traction on the drag strip. <clears throat> and as the most valuable, you'll make a higher profit from slapping those on. Or you'll make more money. I don't know if it's the same profit margin, but whatever. Sport tires. There's only one of those. I don't know what I'd throw that on. Maybe like uh, like a Carrera if I wanted to like have a low-key Porsche or something, something like that. But... I don't know, don't use the sport very often. Standard tires, I never use. Vintage race tires, I'll use for the old school cars that I'm not going to be dragging with. If I'm going to drag with it, it's getting slicks. Almost exclusively. Uh, but since this is a customer's car, <coughs> we'll just put the standard tires on it. <coughs> now be careful here. You might think it's going to size the tire for you. Uh, and you see three numbers here, R15, that's the radius, the inner radius, so our rims are 15 inch in diameter. 215 is going to be the width in millimeters, I believe. So this is 21.5 centimeters wide, which is about uh, 10 inches or so, you know, about tire size. <clears throat> and the 75 is the profile, which is uh, in millimeters also, the distance from the edge of the inside of the wall to where the tread starts. So this is a pretty tall tire. It's fairly skinny, not the skinniest, but it's, it's pretty, you know, normal car tire. Um, if you don't have unrealistic tire sizes on, and I wanted to put like some 265 width tires on to get better grip, you might have some problems. So definitely make sure you have that setting. Oh, my audio is way too low now. The music's so inconsistent. Like some of the bums, some some of the bums, some of the songs just thump. Some don't. So, anyways, uh, the way I like to remember this: if you're smart, you would start with the the. I just covered my screen. Like you could actually see me cover my screen, and then I checked to see if it worked. You just think in your head something like 15, 2, 15, 75. I'm backwards and weird, so I'm going to think 2, 15, 75, 15, and I need four of them. So we open up the menu. I need four of them. 15, 2, 15? See, I already forgot. Yeah, okay. Don't, don't doubt yourself. Four tires at 15, 2, 15, 75. So it costs us 680 credits. Tires and rims are not cheap, especially when you get bigger ones, but they're profitable. <clears throat> All right. What was the last thing we needed? Was it carb? I guess I'll get the. We'll have to come back to get the carb, but that's fine. So, you might be wondering. Great, we've got four new tires, but there's tires here already. Do we need new rims? No. It doesn't ask for new rims. So what you can do? Take off our tires here. Oh my god, this is so slow. This is crazy throwback. I should probably check. There's no brake pad, only front wheel brakes. That's a brake drum. So, yeah, it'll be the front two tires that get brake pads, I believe. Let's be sure here. If you see a rusty bolt like that, it means you have to put some WD-40 on it with right click. If you've done the tutorial, you know this. So this is where our brake pads are going to be. Bolts are back here. And we'll just go ahead and slap one back on. 
because we know we're going to need it anyways. He didn't want new calipers. Oh, we hit a level up. Did you hear that dink? We hit a level up. So we're going to go ahead. What should your first point be? You could get regular customer if you're not pressed for time. You'll make more money quicker. This will let you level up quicker in terms of time. Uh, I'll probably go... I'm going to go with regular customer to start. You should probably do that too. Unless you really want to get speed increase on your... If you want to farm levels, you know, get the observation tree. Or was I just taking off tires? Now I know where most of these screws are and bolts are because I've played for a while. Uh, if you do decide to start on expert, it's gonna you're gonna be looking around a lot for these little bolts and stuff. It's not super easy, but you'll get the hang of it after a while. It's only so many patterns of repetition. <laughs> is my voice too loud? I think my voice is still too loud. I should have. Let me explain how this works. Uh, so some parts have multiple components that are all installed at the same time, like a brake caliper. It has the actual brake caliper. And it has the cylinder that goes inside. I don't know what it does. I think it pushes against the brake or something. Uh, when you have multiple parts, you can select each component, and those will get combined. So you don't necessarily have to use brand new parts with everything you know if you only need to replace a spring and a shock system you could just replace the spring and the shock system uh, so now if we check our order status you can see the brake pads are done yeah definitely you know this isn't a game i'm thinking about trying to speed run it to like max uh until max level or whatever, like where you have everything unlocked. But I don't know. Probably take like eight hours if I. Eight to 14 hours would be my guess. Get those tires taken care of. We're gonna come to our tire station. We're gonna separate the old tires from the rims that we're still gonna use. I'm gonna fly through this bit. If you've done the tutorial, you're familiar with this. You'll find your own little methods on how you do this stuff, but... <clears throat> Once you have all your parts separated, I'll show you a quick way to get them installed most efficiently. You want to be standing between the two machines here. Alright, so now you can see we've got a whole bunch of old tires and a whole bunch of new ones. Great. We're going to get to see what I meant about the component selection part. We've got four different rims of different uh, durabilities. So I could start with this 47, click to confirm. And I could use this tire, but we don't want to. Let's make sure those are the same. Yep, I did great. So this is the rhythm I typically use. We do the first one, take it off, put on another. While it's doing its thing, you balance the other one. Take it off, this should be finishing up. Take it off, put another one on, and rinse and repeat. If you're really good, you can also use your brake lathe. Well, not really good, but once you have the speed to run around real fast. You can also hit your brake lathes while you're timing this, so you can do, you can do tires, rims, and brakes, discs at the same time. If, and you can, you know, you could toss in some spring work in there, but you'll see more of that later when we get a little bit more advanced. So, now we have a new set of tires with some old ones that are useless. We've got our new oil filter. The last thing we need is a carburetor, and then we can just put everything back together. Okay, this shouldn't be too hard. Uh, 
Okay. Gotta take out the air filter. And what did I need? Round air filter. Two card. Okay, I think that's the part I just took out. Yep. So we'll just put that on the shopping list and we'll buy it from the normal car parts section. Now, if you wanted to, air filters are something you could upgrade and you get a 1.2% tuning bonus, which just means your car is 1.2% better than it normally could be if it was at 100%. I think those bonuses need to be at 100 to actually matter, by the way. So, buy that filter. As you can see, we've spent 900 and 23 credits if you're curious you can kind of see what you're going to be paid out here it'll update once you get more stuff done uh, so we should be able to put everything back together now i think yeah should be good and then we just got to top off the fluids oh man i'm gonna have to upgrade my screw speed soon too i can't stand it <laughs> Screw speed, I would take over mounting speed now that I've played for a while. A slow mounting speed is annoying, but nothing is more annoying than 12 long nuts you gotta put in at a speed like this. Or bolts, whatever they're called. Nuts go on the back, I guess. See, I don't know anything. to raise the car for the fuel filter <clears throat> so certain air beers or car can only be worked on from certain positions on the lift for example if I wanted to take out my crankshaft right now I can't because it's the car is too low generally speaking this position you can work on the engine except for things underneath it on the ground there's not much you can work on except these little doodads and stuff so you pretty much be jacking your car up every time at least to that first height setting <clears throat> we just want to get in there and put that fuel filter back on now we can check our car status you can see the payout went up because we completed everything he asked for so now we just gotta top off his fluids it'll tell you if you're forgetting something like if I tried to if I tried to finish the order now, it wouldn't let me, or if it was missing a clip or something, it would tell you. So, uh, to put fluid in stuff, you just normal take off the cap and pour fluids. You'll see the jug dip. That's how you know you're done. I didn't do that. Once that angle changes, you're right at the right in the middle of the fill zone. So if you want to top it off more, you can. If you want to be cheapskate, you could. I could just call this one like right there, but I like to go right in the middle of the of the filling zones. Typically, maybe a little bit more. Just personal preference. Soundtrack's okay in this game. It'd be cool if they had a feature that you could import your own music or you know hook up a library. Okay, let's break. I did coolant, right? Did I do coolant? Can you drain something that's empty? I think I did coolant. I think I did. Want to tell me? I can't remember if I did coolant or not. I was distracted. So it's a customer's car, I just like to... Oh. I like to check the dipstick just to make sure everything is alright. Okay. Car should be done. Finish order. Cool. So we made 800. We're up 885 off of that order. 
So repairs, you don't make much money. That's okay. We're just trying to farm XP. That was our first order on expert difficulty. Uh, pretty good start, I guess. Um, I might take a break here. My voice is starting to go with all the mucusy problems. I'm sorry. I'm going to get real froggy sounding here. Maybe that's why I'm grinning because I'm just full of slime and mucus. Um, I'll leave you off with what to keep on doing. Oh, you do start with an interior detailing kit. That's pretty cool. I, I, didn't, I didn't remember that. Uh, just keep doing orders. If you get a bonus opportunity or you see a car you want to work on, go for it. Like this Pagani would be really fun to drive around if it's in good condition. Let's just, let's just take a look at it real quick. Sorry, it's not a piece of crap. Yeah. Thing's got a turbocharger in it too. So yeah, if you wanted, you could take this thing to the racetrack and drive it around, or I think you can even drag with other people's cars. I'm not sure. Uh, what I meant to talk about though, and these Paganis are nice. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, if you wanted to be cheesy, you could examine all this stuff, which would level me up again, probably, because this engine component's gonna have like 22, 24 or something parts, which is why you want that uh, examination upgrade upgrade pretty soon like first or second probably first maybe second I don't know but you could do all those examinations go to your car status and then finish order undone gets rid of the car you keep all the XP yada yada rinse and repeat you got infinite XP super easy I will point out see this Porsche Carrera this is actually the car that you saw on my first mode just not mine. Uh, these symbols kind of tell you what's wrong with it. So this has brake problems. Uh, when you're starting out, you're not going to want to do anything that does like engine stuff. All right. So just think suspension, brakes, fluids until you have more equipment. Because working on an engine is a pain until we get the garage expansion. So this has been the live stream version of how to start Car Mechanic 21. I hope you learned something or you're inspired. Oh, we got a case. That's cool. Usually get a case from uh, completing story missions. This will let you possibly get cases after all your story missions are done and you're just doing normal orders. So you get a case after every story mission. What is a case? Go to your inventory, open it up, and if we're lucky, we'll get XP and scrap. XP and scrap, come on. Scrap, okay. XP? Yes, 52 XP. Let's go. So we're almost leveled up again. That's terrific. You might be wondering what to do with these parts. Might as well just sell them for now. You'll be having plenty of opportunity to get scrapped later, and none of these are going to be usable for anything else. Plus, you don't have a warehouse yet to store them. You don't want your inventory getting too cluttered, as it makes it a lot harder to uh, actually determine what you need. So I guess we made more like 962 credits off of that. Is there anything else I'm forgetting for now? I don't think so. So just keep doing story orders. They're typically better than the normal ones, but if you see one that's got a bonus to XP and you can you know you can do it, go for it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. This has been Ellis from Greenway Gaming. I'm gonna hop off, try to edit down a YouTube video for you guys. Uh, and then I'm gonna be playing some more car mechanic simulator by myself on hard mode because like or expert mode because I haven't done it yet and it seems really fun uh, I really like that it doesn't highlight anything so I should probably get some practice in before I keep going for you guys till next time Greenway Gaming 